Good morning. And uh, I am sitting up here in Juneau, Alaska, visiting family. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a little cold. It is April. And uh, so it's still a little chilly, 30 some odd degrees. But I wanted to address something that frequently comes up in questions of why do I go with an MSP, a managed service provider? Why should I hire you? Or why should I hire an internal person to manage my network, whatever my network is. And, uh, you know, there's benefits, obviously, to both. But I'm going to address those a little bit because I'm able to come up here to Juno, unlike an internal staff member who uh, is a solo person. I can leave the continental United States. But we're going to address a couple of those issues of the difference, the benefits of hiring internally and the benefits of hiring a managed service provider like CCS. Number one issue that comes up is the availability and the immediacy of response from an internal person versus an MSP. And, and, you know, they, we get questions or or comments of, well, Alice is right here in the building. If something breaks, we just get her over here and, and she can fix it. Well, that's very true. I cannot argue with that. There is no way we are ever going to be as responsive as Alice is to get down the hallway, power cycle your monitor or plug in a new monitor or grab something out of the back. But the drawback is unless, you know, if you're a nice company to work for, I bet you give Alice the evening and weekends off and you let her go on vacation. And that's really where a managed service provider shines is we're not as immediate, we're not in the building, we can't just run over a device or we can't just come reboot something. We have to troubleshoot it and then we have to send someone over. But the benefit of an MSP is while we can't be as immediate on site is we have depth. So when you call CCS, what happens is we actually have a dispatcher then that has a whole bunch of people that she can send it to to get your problem solved. And when we let our people go on vacation or when I come to Juno or to Europe or to wherever in the world I am, we're able to solve your problem. Whereas if Alice leaves town and if you don't have her on, uh, 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 you know, her, if she's out of coverage, then you're scrambling to find somebody to help out in a time of need. So that's the first one is the immediacy of Alice versus an MSP. And each one wins depending on what, uh, on how you want to look at it. All right. So one of the other big issues that we can get that people bring up is Alice really knows our network. You guys can't know our network the way that Alice does. And so why do we want to swap Alice for an MSP or why not? Why don't we hire Alice? Because when we have an internal IT person, they really know our network. I can't argue with that one. They, I've been that internal IT person. I've known that, uh, you know, Bob, the CEO, um, that I see every day, how he likes his icon set up on his desktop. I've also had that sales director that refused to wear glasses. And so I had to know that he wanted his font on his computer or the uh, display uh, blown up to like 250% so he could read it. And, uh, and so you get to know those things. You memorize the IP addresses, you memorize the network. And that's fantastic because like the previous question, it gives you immediacy of response. They don't need to look things up to find an answer. Now, the drawback to that, and where an MSP can resolve that, is they at some point, Alice ends up leaving. And, you know, I think I saw that the average IT person now sticks around something like two years. But if you've got an Alice that's been there for 10 years, fantastic. That's great. But what that person is going to do, eventually, they're going to move on. And then you'll hear this big, giant sucking vacuum because what we've witnessed over and over again, I was guilty of this when I was an internal IT guy, is to just kind of memorize stuff or put them in notes or save them in spots that aren't easy to find. And then when that person leaves, like I left that company, then all of a sudden you struggle. An MSP, on the other hand, we document things kind of like if you're a physician, your medical practice documents everything on a patient internally. That's what we do so that anybody can find that information that works on your network. And we have it documented. So in the event that one of my employees leave or if I don't make it back from a trip, everything carries on and we can continue to to, to work on your network. So yes, Alice is immediate. She has everything memorized. She's had it memorized for five years, but Alice may leave. On the flip side, your MSP, 
We're going to have to stop. We're going to have to research, make sure we have the right information, whatever technician works on your network, but where it's going to be accurate. And if any of my technicians leave or your MSP's technicians leave, you're still going to be able to carry on. All right. And probably the third thing that comes up frequently when people are comparing internal versus external is what about the cost? Because having uh, MSPs aren't cheap. Uh, it, it's We're not an inexpensive option when you're just looking dollars, right? Because to do it right takes the right amount of tools. So, you know, if you have an Alice, an Alice might, uh, if she knows how to do desktop stuff and to delve a little bit into networking, not a network engineer, not a server engineer like, you know, we've got on staff, but enough to be safe and know when to stop and reach out for help. You might be paying Alice sixty thousand dollars a year, let's say. Maybe maybe seventy. If a forty thousand dollar person really can only do desktop work. But so let's say you're paying her sixty, fully burdened, then a thirty percent burden, she's probably costing you eighty thousand dollars a year. Well, that is just the labor piece of it. And as an MSP, and so you know, you know what that fixed cost is, um, unless something breaks and you have to do a project. But you know what Alice is gonna cost. The flip side to that is as an MSP, you're going to spend probably more than having Alice, but it's going to come with other things that Alice doesn't bring to the table. So when you've got an Alice, Alice has to go and then find all the tools and you're still paying for the software to manage the network and all the cybersecurity tools and the Microsoft Office and all of that. When you call an MSP, you want to have a discussion with us about What's the labor piece of this versus what's the cost of the tools? Because with Alice, you still have to buy all the tools. So it might be $80,000 worth of fully burdened salary. But then if you have to spend $80,000 a year on the software to secure your network, then all of a sudden that changes what the picture is. Um, with an MSP, we bring the, the cybersecurity tools. We bring the service desk tools, we bring the document management tools, we bring, we sell you the Microsoft Office. All of that is part of the full cost of a managed service provider and why it doesn't, starts to look a little more reasonable when we are comparing the cost of my team and my tools against the cost of Alice. And the other thing is, if Alice ever leaves, then you've got to go hire someone else. And um, I think, Finding good IT help is very hard and it's expensive. I think if you go to the recruiter route, they charge 20,000 or, or 20%, 30% of Alice's $60,000. So all of a sudden you're spending another 10 or 20,000 every couple of years to replace Alice when she goes and finds a bigger, better job. So hope that helps. Hope these tips have helped you.